Today our topic is revision strategies and this is part 4 of the series. And today we are going to share or discuss three different strategies. The first one is quizzing. Quizzing is the most commonly used strategy in the classroom. Teachers ask questions and elicit answers randomly from different students. Another formal way of quizzing can be holding a quiz competition in which you actually have teams and questions are asked and there are winners. Another way of using quizzing would be that you assign children different units and they prepare questions to be asked in the class and they come in the class and ask questions from one another. The third way is the drill and what do I mean by uh, drill is that you are going to form quest several questions from the unit covering all the key aspects and concepts in that unit and for one key information you prepare questions two or three or four questions in different ways. For example, you ask who was born on this date, when was this person born, or what is the importance of this date in history. So for the same key information, you can make two or three questions. The purpose is that you cover the unit so thoroughly that by the end of the drill, every student who had come prepared or who had not prepared well is ready to answer all kinds of uh, questions related to that unit. And you go on asking those questions till you feel that everyone has memorized those questions thoroughly. And this, of course, uh, will be related to information that is factual and that has to be memorized. This is another way of drill where you can hold a, a race against time and you can prepare different worksheets like the one that is on the screen. This is one part of that worksheet and the name of the worksheet is A Stitch in Time Saves Nine and you can use other uh, proverbs like uh, As Fast as a Flash or Something to Grow About and then you give children one, two, or three minutes, and within those three minutes, they try to solve as many questions as they can. And each one of them will have a different speed. They will be able to solve different number of questions. They can, uh, when you say stop, they can just uh, mark the end of their task that day and write the date. And this can go on for several days till they complete all the worksheet. And then they will be getting another one. And this is how you can help them revise all the key concepts that they have covered already in mathematics. The second strategy is flashcards. Flashcards is a common strategy used in preschool where different uh, sight reading words are flashed and the children with the help of the flashcards they memorize those words and they are able to read them in the environment. But for senior classes uh, that is from class 3 onwards or maybe class 1 onwards children can prepare flashcards themselves. These flashcards can be pocket sized so that they can put the flashcards in their pockets and revise whenever they have time at the end of the period, at the beginning of a new period, or in their vans when they are going home, they can take out their flashcards from their pockets and revise the key vocabulary. The vocabulary can be related to language or it can be related to uh, science, social studies, Islam, yad, whatever subjects they are studying, even Urdu. For the flashcards, they can write the word and word on one side, meaning on the other side, or they can write the word and the meaning on one side and a sample sentence at the back of the flashcard, 
and then they are revising, they can look at the sentence and think of the meaning and the word and they can look at the word and the meaning and create a sentence and then check whether their sentence would be correct or not with the help of the sample sentence. So key terms and vocabulary can be on the flashcards and the best thing about flashcards is that whenever they are free, they will be using their free time constructively with the help of these flashcards. They will be revising and learning the key terms. The next uh, and the last in this video is graphic organizers. For me, graphic organizers are extremely important and very helpful tools of memory. Graphic organizers can be of different shapes and each shape is suitable for a different kind of learning and different kind of text. If a text has two pieces of information, two different types of something which can be compared, they have differences and similarities, for example, plant cell and animal cell, so you can use the Venn diagram to talk about them and to graphically present it, the information in front of you with the help of Venn diagram will help you memorize uh, better. Sequential thinking model where you can have a sequence of information, maybe stages or steps that go in a sequence. Then you have a classification, you can use the next diagram and uh, then things can be classified, they have subtypes, so you can use this diagram. The flowcharts or chain diagrams can be used for uh, things that are uh, processes which have steps, chronological order like in stories, so you can use a diagram like this or this. Information that can be classified in two parts can be uh, uh, used, can be presented in the form of this right angle diagram. Then descriptions, uh, for descriptions you can use Spider, spider webs or concept maps and you, you can uh, use these diagrams for uh, descriptive and factual expository texts. So to uh, for a text uh, which has comparisons and contrast you can use a Venn diagram, a text that describes a process for that, you can use a flowchart, and if the text describes a fictional or non-fictional sequence of events, you can use a flowchart. So it will have some order, chronological order, and so the flowchart would be the best choice. If the text describes how something can be classified, a branch diagram would be, or a tree chart would be a suitable uh, graphic organizer. If, a, if an object is described in a text, you can use a labeled diagram or you can use a web. If the text presented an argument, a spider diagram or mind map would be useful. Mind map is, is a technical uh, diagram which is, which is uh, created by Tony Buzan and it is, uh, it is created in the form of uh, the way our, our mind stores information. So we have neurons and neurons have tentacles. They form connections with all the other pieces of information here and there and these connections is what helps us to memorize things. So following that pattern, the mind map has been created. It has associations and it, ha it can, uh, can in, and with the help of the lines and colors and links and connections, we are able to connect information with the other pieces of information that are related. And uh, we, when we have to draw a mind map, we place the paper in landscape and start with an image of what we want to uh, 
talk about in the middle. So that is our topic. And for the mind map, we need to select words, keywords, and each word is written on the line and not at the end of the line. And we write in clear print handwriting. The subtopics, they branch out from the main thick branches, and these branches look like the branches of the tree. And the sub-branches are thinner, and they go on thinning when uh, there are several subtopics. And they are linked together, and that is how information is connected and understood. Each mind map will have its own style. The owner or the person who is drawing the mind map will have their own style. They will use colors and imagination and pictures depending on their own personal choice. Each mind map will be unique and different. It will look beautiful and, of course, it is fun making a mind map. And uh, you create pictures and you create the mind map so that it triggers the information that is key and you want to memorize that information. So this is what a mind map is and you can see what it looks like. I will show you some more examples. This is a mind map of Surah Hujrat. This is a mind map related to electricity drawn by a class 6 student. This is another a mind map related to SWAT from the English textbook. Lukman's advice. This is a poem uh, which is based on the translation of Surah Lukman. This is also from Surah, uh, Surah Lukman. And that's all for today. Jazakallah. We have studied three strategies today and hope uh, that you will practice and use it in your classroom and then share your, uh, your experience in the comments. That's all. Allah Hafiz.